Good afternoon and welcome to the Southern Bryan State Fellowships for Visual Arts webinar. I am Emmett Stevenson. Uh, this program is made possible through South Arts, who is the host organization. And I want to, again, welcome you to our webinar um, uh, this afternoon. This should take um, approximately an hour. I want to share with you some information as it relates to the program, the application process, and some of the, the benefits and features of the program. All right, so we're going to, we have an agenda for the afternoon. We will uh, start with introductions of staff who works the pro who work the program. We'll look at South Arts, uh, take an overview, look at South Arts. We'll do a Southern Prize and State Fellowships overview. We'll talk about applicant eligibility, the application process, the timeline for the program. We'll share with you our contact information and then we'll open it up so that we can address any questions that you have about the program, about the information we've shared with you this, e this afternoon and so on and so forth. All right, so again, my name is Emmett Stevenson. I'm the Director of Artist Engagement here at South Arts. And um, I have well over 20 years of arts administration experience working with Fulton County Arts Council for the bulk of that time, uh, that 20 years. And recently, in the last year and a half, coming on board with South Arts to manage uh, artist initiatives, ongoing programs targeting artist participation and connecting artists with opportunities throughout the region, uh, throughout the nation and internationally. We have with us Joseph Crawford, who recently joined the team a, a week ago, a week or so ago, who is the assistant director of programs and he will support um, the Southern Prize and State Fellowships program. Joseph? Um, hello, as uh, Emma said, my name is Joseph Crawford and uh, uh, glad to be here. Right. All right. So the overall mission for South Arts is uh, this whole notion of vitality in our regional communities and ensuring vitality through um, the element of the arts, making sure arts are present in all of our communities um, uh, throughout the region and um, just making sure that the arts are providing a stimulus, if you will, uh, in terms of development, in terms of uh, business activity, et cetera, and just sustainability for communities. South Arts was established in 1975. We are headquartered in Atlanta, Georgia. We are one of six regional arts organizations and we serve nine Southern states. We currently have uh, approximately 21 programs are, that are current, uh, active. Now, the nine states that we serve include Alabama, Florida, Georgia, Kentucky, Louisiana, Mississippi, the Carolinas, and Tennessee. All right, so on to the Southern Prize for Visual Arts, the overview. So. What we are, our intent and our vision for the program is to acknowledge and support and celebrate the highest quality visual art that's being created in the American South. Our program provides $5,000 fellowship awards uh, for each of the nine states. So we identify an artist in each of the nine states and those artists who receive the award receive a $5,000 um, cash payment. We also provide um, a chance for those nine fellows who are identified for each of the states to compete for the Southern Prize winner and the Southern Prize finalist designation. Uh, the Southern Prize winner comes with an additional award of $25,000 and the Southern Prize finalist designation comes with an additional award of $10,000. In addition to the cash the uh, cash awards, e, the winner and finalists will receive a two week residency. Our primary partner for the residency is the Hambridge Center in Raven Gap, Georgia. 
Another benefit and feature of the Southern Prize and State Fellowships for Visual Arts is the Turin Exhibition. Um, and the Turin Exhibition has a component of an opening reception where we stage our award ceremony. And for the, this uh, 2024 cohort of uh, Southern Prize and State Fellowships, uh, that event will take place in October 2024 in Hollywood, Florida. We are also building additional opportunities for fellows that uh, serve as opportunities to promote the work that uh, our artists are doing, our fellows are doing, the pra their artistic practice, and this whole notion of building networks, peer networks and curatorial networks so that increased opportunities are available. So we discussed where the opening will be at Art and Culture Center in Hollywood, Florida. We'll travel the exhibition to Clemson University, to City Gallery in Charleston, South Carolina, to BBC, uh, the Bo Bartlett Center at Columbus State University, and uh, possibly even more. So typically we travel the exhibition to four or five venues every year. And we are definitely concentrating on making sure we cover um, at least four states within the region and we move the exhibition around the region so that all of our communities uh, are able to enjoy the work of the fellows who have been identified. Okay, again, talking about the Turin exhibition, state fellows are required to attend the Turin exhibition opening and they are there with the cohort, so they have a chance to network amongst themselves and to meet um, staff of Sartre Arts and our hosting venue. We use this opportunity as an award ceremony to identify all of the fellows, but also uh, to announce the Southern Prize winner and the finalists. The tour lasts for up to two years. And again, we look to tour four or five states um, across the region. Again, we look to spread the tour so that we are covering all of the states within a two year period, if possible. So if you are awarded, we ask that you uh, have works available during that two year time frame, And we understand that that's not always possible that you may make a sale of an artwork that's in the exhibition and there are ways we can accommodate for that so don't be too concerned about that if you are selected okay let's move on and talk about eligibility requirements of course we have to be a legal resident of the south arts region for at least the last two years at least 18 years of age uh, not a student studying in a visual arts program. So you can be a student studying in another discipline, but not in a visual arts specified program. You should be an actively practicing visual artist at any stage of your practice. So it can be on from immersion up to professional. We consider all of those um, levels of development. You can only submit one application per uh, cycle. And we do welcome collaborations, but not uh, more than two artists per collaboration. So a special initiative that we're kicking off this year is to identify and celebrate uh, some traditions that are central to the South. That includes vernacular art, commonly referred to as folk art, and typically involves um, artists who are self-taught. They do not go through an academic program. So definitely looking for artists who are practicing vernacular art. We're also uh, targeting craft art. So ceramics and glass, fiber and textile, artists working in leather work, needlework, and working with paper. So, um, this is an initiative we're kicking off and we're looking to definitely provide opportunities, um, more opportunities for vernacular artists and craft artists uh, during this cycle and on into the future. So if you are a practicing artist of one of these forms, uh, one of these areas, uh, definitely 
are interested in having you apply, want to discuss more, definitely let us know. Um, and let's go ahead and move on into the application. So the application is online. I have included the um, URL or the link to the application for the 2024 Southern Prize for Visual Arts. There is an application fee of $25. Application is composed of three forms, uh, two required attachments and uh, media, which would be your work samples. And you are allowed to include up to 10 work samples. And I want to note that the demographic information that we collect is for internal administration use only. So we don't send that or share that information with the panelists um, or outside of the administrative operations of South Arts. And you are you do have a choice where you can opt out of responding to any other dem demographic information if you so choose. So let's talk about the forms. So the primary form is the artist statement. And this is a form that really gives you an opportunity to discuss the uniqueness of you as an artist and your artistic practice. We do limit the artist statement to 250 words, which is approximately 1,250 characters. 1,250 characters actually allows up to about 300 words. So we do have a little bit of flexibility, but it is dependent on the the length of words that you use. So if you're using very long, long words, uh, you will exceed that maximum uh, character count uh, pretty quickly. So just be mindful of that. And um, if you have any questions, I know we've had some issues with it in the, in the past. Uh, the character counts, we are not able to make adjustments to that. So we definitely have to operate inside of those parameters. Um, again, on into, uh, let's, let's talk some more about the art statement. So we do have a link on the website that provides information on helping you to craft an art statement. If you, my recommendation, if you are not a strong writer, if you have within your network, a writer who is able to really tap into the uniqueness of you as an artist into the uniqueness of your artistic practice, I would suggest engaging that person, uh, that writer to help you with this. And that is A-OK -okay with us. So, but I will say this, um, primarily the jury looks at your work samples and then they come to the artist statement sort of to uh, really get a sense of what the practice is and really get a sense of what how you are supporting the work samples that you have submitted. So definitely pay attention to your artist statement. Okay, let's move on into the demographic information. We asked for information on ethnicity, gender identity, and birth year. Again, this is information internal to South Arts. We use it to report to our uh, donors and, and funders in terms of collectively, that's an overall picture of the program and the participation that we are receiving in, in, uh, for the program from artists who we are serving, so. Okay, we also ask for you to categorize your work. Uh, I think there is space for you if a category does not necessarily work for you, you can self-define what your practice or what your category is. Um, so be mindful of that. If you have any questions about that, let us know once you get into the process. Um, you can also, we ask for information on the region or the state for which you reside and um, the county of residence. Now, for uh, our artists who are living in Louisiana, we understand that you don't have counties, you have parishes. So um, same, same thing there. So if it's a county, a parish or a township, give us that information there. Um, 
And then we ask for you to certify the information that you have provided. So a digital certification will suffice. And that is item four. So as uh, attachments, we begin with a state identification of driver's license. This helps us start the residency verification process. Um, so we do ask for that. Uh, we ask for a resume. Our if, um, again, the resume or curriculum vita is for internal use. We do not share that with the panelists or anybody outside of South Arts. All right, let's talk about the portfolio. Again, you can submit up to 10 high resolution images of your work. Um, and it's work that has been created on or after January 22nd. We talk about experimental mixed media works that includes video or sound. You can and you can include video or sound files within the total count of uh, the ten items. And there's more information about video and sound files there. So we do have space within the work samples to include descriptions, uh, date, title. Um, medium, size, all of that is critical to uh, us and to the jury in, in terms of understanding the work and just kind of better visualizing the work beyond the work sample shared digitally. So definitely make sure you pay attention to including as much of that information as is possible. We do not want our we work sample, our works in, uh, completed while the applicant was a matriculated student are not eligible for submission here. And again, only completed work should be submitted. And if you have any questions, we can definitely ask, uh, uh, address those as you have them. But typically all of this information is included in the, um, information shared online. So this is all, all of this information is available to you in the application online. Okay, so some final thoughts on the application. Before you begin anything on the application, make sure your slide room profile reflects your current reality. And by that, what I mean is you may have used slide room to apply for other opportunities in the past. If you haven't updated that information in a while, uh, we're going to, to receive information related to your profile um, as it existed when you applied to those other opportunities. So. Uh, just be mindful of that. Make sure you update that profile before you begin your application so that we are receiving the correct information as it relates to your residency in particular. In terms of work samples, I just ask that you choose your best and make sure that the works connect conceptually. So again, just to restate, our discussion about the artist statement, it matters. So spend some time crafting the artist statement. And if you need the help of a writer, please enlist those services. So the review process for submissions, we enlist a national jury for our two-tiered selection process for the fellowships. So we do a preview and then we um, uh, look at um, candidates for each of the nine states and make our, uh, the jury makes its selection uh, based off of those uh, uh, reviews. We enlist the national jury to review uh, the works of the nine state fellows to determine, uh, to make recommendations and selections for the Southern Prize winner and the Southern Prize finalists. Again, the jurors make their selections based on artistic excellence as evidenced through the work samples. And the work samples that reflects the diversity of artist artistic expression of the region. 
Let's talk a little bit about the Southern Prize for Visual Arts timeline. Our application opened on Monday, October 2nd. We have a fee waiver deadline. If you require a fee waiver, uh, you can request that through Tuesday, January 2nd. The applications close on Monday, January 8th. Application reviews will begin shortly thereafter in January and go through March of 2024. Our target is to make award notifications in spring 2024, hopefully April. And the funding cycle will be July 1 of 24 through June 30th of 25. Here's information on our contact, uh, contact details. My telephone uh, contact and email contact are there. Joseph's information is there as well. You can schedule technical assistance through the website. This is the direct link to do that. And uh, basically that sends the information directly to my calendar. So we uh, welcome you to schedule technical, technical assistance if you have any questions about the application process or any part of the process at all. If you want verification or just further details, I'll be happy to speak with you. Okay, so let's open it up for questions and answers. All right, Emmett, so we have a couple questions already. Sure. Um, the first one is, can you clarify uh, the states that you reside in to qualify um, for this grant? Sure, sure can. So let's go back to that slide. So the states are Alabama, Florida, Georgia, Kentucky, Louisiana, Mississippi, North Carolina, South Carolina, and Tennessee. Awesome, thank you. Um, how should an artist choose the category for their application? So that is, a, um, that decision is totally yours. Uh, I do recommend that it, you look at your practice, what you're doing, and look at the predefined categories that we have. If it doesn't neatly fit into any one of those, um, you can, I think we have a, a category of mixed or interdisciplinary, so you can choose that as well or if you need to define it otherwise, just let us know. I think there is a category for you to self-describe, but I think interdisciplinary is sort of the catch-all if you can't um, find it, or multidisciplinary is the catch-all if you can't find it among those other selections. Awesome, and uh, can an artist submit multiple applications, for example, if they're submitting work in different categories? No, it's only one application per uh, cycle. So you have to, we ask that you select the best of what you have and some, submit one application based on that. Um, some people spend a lot of time on a single piece of work. How flexible are the time period requirements for the work samples submitted? So we typically want to look at the last two years. So we are not really flexible there but it's the last, it's the prior two years. And that's what we want work that's been created within the last two years. Thank you. And um, regarding the touring exhibition, do all work submitted via the application need to be available and not sold? Actually, no. So this year we had works that were sold that the curator selected and we were able to um, use those pieces on agreement with the collector. So what you submit in terms of work samples, may, uh, the curators may, if you've already sold it, it's not in your possession anymore uh, at the time of that curatorial process. Um, the curator typically works with you to um, maybe look at things that are conceptually connected to the works that you submitted. Um, or they may go a whole different direction and select something else. So just depending on who curates the show, 
uh, is how that's going to move. Again, if a work sells because of the tour and the collector who purchased it is demanding delivery of it, we can work with the artist to substitute maybe another work in place of that work that has to leave the show. So there's a bit of flexibility there. Um, does the subject matter of the work submitted need to pertain to the state they live in? No, it does not. And definitely um, it doesn't have to be about the South. <laughs> uh, again, we talk about diversity uh, that reflects the region. So um, it's not confined to work that's about the South or work that's about the region that you represent. Great. And um, what category would collage art fit into? Would you call it craft, mixed media? Collage, uh, um, I would need more information. Probably mixed media. Probably mixed media. Would need a little bit more information on what the collage, you know, what it is. Right. And would you say a question like that would be something that they may want to reach out to us sure. individually you can with? schedule technical assistance. You can shoot me an email, phone call, what have you. Um, but definitely follow up with me so I can steer you in the right direction. But need a little bit more information on that one. Great. And um, what do you recommend in terms of including detail images in the work samples portion? Like uh, would using five of the 10 photo slots to showcase details of a work be unwise or? So again, that's an artist call. So if you think that the detail will make the case for your work samples, definitely move forward with doing that. But we don't have a recommendation on how you move with providing, you know, full image shots or detail shots. That's something that you will have to sort of just uh, make the decision about. Great. And can you touch on the application due date again? Sure. So the deadline is Monday, January 8th. If you need a fee waiver, if your circumstances are such that you need a fee waiver, we want to make sure that we provide access to our artists in the region. So definitely get that in to me by Tuesday, January 2nd. That is through an email, uh, a brief uh, blurb just telling me what's going on, and uh, we'll work with you on that. Awesome. And all that information can also be found on the website in regards exactly. to due dates and everything. Exactly. All of this information is at the top of, uh, near the top of our webpage, our program webpage. So all of the information is there. All right. And Emmett, would you recommend submitting up to 10 individual works or 10 works from one body of work? Again, we talk about concept and what I have discovered in the last two juries that I've um, witnessed or I've administrated uh, or facilitated is that um, the juries look for works that conceptually related. So a body of work is probably uh, the recommendation that I would give you to submit it. Awesome. And can you clarify what all qualifies as self-taught? Um, so say you went to, you did two quarters at a university, um, but still identify primarily as vernacular art. Right. Um, and see that it becomes a little tricky <laughs> to say, you know, you're not informed by the academic world if you've, you've done any time in an academic program. So definitely something that we can talk about and, and the technical assistance um, session. But typically self-taught is no, no, nowhere that you touched the academic, uh, an academic setting in terms of visual arts that you're totally self-taught. But we can discuss that more. And I'm going to do a, um, a specific uh, video that will be on demand and available on the website 
that really touches on that special initiative and provides a bit more detail. So look out for that in the next two weeks. That'll be up. Great. Um, and then regarding image size, um, up to five megabytes, um, but does that also require a pixel length on longest size? Um, or can you can you dive into that aspect of it? Or is that going to be a particular uh, email kind of question? Um, that's more technical than I can provide assistance with. I would say five megs total, um, as long as it's visible, and it's contained within a standard screen size because they're all going to be look, uh, reviewed uh, through a computer. They'll be reviewed online. So, you know, just make sure it's not too large that we have to shrink it down. Um, but let me, I'll look into that and I'll provide more information on the website as an update. Awesome, thank you. And um, if chosen as a fellow, when is the first time the work has to be made available? Um, if you are chosen with, and we suggest, are we move forward with an April, 2024 announcement award notification, the works will have to be available. Um, you should have them in your possession by July one, because we have to get them to Hollywood, Florida in time for an October opening. So the curator would begin discussions with you, probably that's something like June-ish, June, July, at the earliest, maybe even sooner than that. Um, just depends on how the curator works and what their timeline is. Great, thank you. And um, Slide Room, can you dive into what that is and is it free? Slide Room is free to uh, for you to register. Um, the application fee we charge though is $25. So that's the only fee associated with submitting your application. So you can register, it's my understanding that you can register through Slide Room for free. When you submit for our particular program, it is a $25 charge. Slideroom.com. Great, thank you. Um, and then to clarify, um, the work should be within the last two years? Yes. Great. And then um, should images of murals or other permanently fixed pieces be um, included? You can include that, but also just be mindful that we are supporting a touring exhibition. So it becomes difficult when we talk about large scale public art type um, projects or works. Uh, we'll like to see, I mean, if it's sculpture, as long as it's not prohibitively large, that those works can be considered. If you would like to include the murals just as um, samples, that's fine, but also include some things that are more portable as well, if you can. Great. And if an artist is multiple multi multidisciplinary um, and has work uh, works in numbers of categories, how consistent should the work be to appear in the application? I would say make sure that they connect, make sure that they have something in common, that they connect conceptually is the recommendation. The artist is always free to submit what he, she, they choose to submit. So... All right, and um, if submitting a typology of more than 10 total individual photographs, um, should you add the photos themselves as attachments or would it be better to show it in a gallery view of multiple portraits at a time? No, you. I would suggest you not do that. So you should, each of your images should be a distinct shot of artwork, not a collage, like a, a contact sheet. So you can't, use one image to show me 10 different works of art. So each, okay, so each image should really be a distinct work of art. Uh, if you want to include detail shots of, an, of a work, that's fine, but I would not use the work samples as a opportunity to 
give us a contact sheet of multiple works. Okay. Um, and this one asks, it appears you can pick more than one category regarding your work. Is that advisable? For example, drawing, painting, and mixed media. Yes, you can do that. Or you can label it multidisciplinary if you so choose. And then we have um, one more. Can you... Um, dive into the guidelines about the 10 images submitted again, um, just to like solidify and clarify what those 10, Im 10 images should be and best practices around that. Okay, so the primary best practice are, and this is recommendation, is that those 10 Im images be conceptually related to each other. So a body of work as opposed to going across multiple bodies of works, unless you can make that work in terms of concept. Um, it's totally up to you as an artist what you submit, but I'm giving you advisement on what I've seen in terms of the jury reviewing the works and what they have expressed a concern with uh, when they are reviewing the works. Um, um, but that, I mean, that's pretty much it. I mean, it's up to you what you submit. I recommend, I recommend, <laughs> that you make sure that they're connected somehow conceptually. Typically through it being a part of a collection of body of work that you have produced, so. Great, and uh, also just to clarify deadlines, everything is Eastern time, correct? Yes, it is. All Eastern right. Time. And is there a, do you have a recommended or preferred minimum or maximum size for the art? In terms of the resolution, just make sure it's high resolution. Again, we're looking at this uh, online. So we're looking at it on our computers. So just make sure reasonably it can fit within a standard screen size. So consider 14 inch laptop monitor as standard. As long as we can see it there and you know, when we, uh, we pull to the jury together, we can review it. it that's fine. Um, any recommendations for the physical piece themselves or? Oh, um, again, I'm not necessarily. Typically, we haven't defined it. We probably will move towards defining it because we have had some sizable works um, presented or included in, in recent exhibitions. Uh, we just want to make sure that we can transport the works between uh, venue partners uh, reasonably. So I won't specify now if you have a concern that your work is a bit outside or above what's uh, above or exceeds the uh, standard size or whatever in terms of a twin exhibition, let me know. I can, you can schedule tech assistance. You can send an email, et cetera, et cetera. And we can discuss, but if, yeah, that's, that's all I'll say about that. Great. Thank you. Um, and then are you saying that if you are not self-taught, you cannot submit for this? No, I'm saying that we are, we have a special initiative that we are, looking to engage artists who are self-taught, but we're looking at any level of uh, practice. So emerging on into professional, whether you are self-taught or you are academically trained. So we know that craft art and vernacular art, our folk art um, is a key component to this conversation about art in the South. It's pretty powerful. I mean, Nellie Mae Rowe, Thornton Dow, Lenny Holly, so on and so forth, uh, that we want to make sure that those artists have access to programs like this, like Southern Prize and State Fellowships for Visual Arts. So that doesn't exclude you. That doesn't limit you as an academically trained artist from consideration is that Typically, vernacular art is not represented or has not been represented in the Southern Brides. So 
what we want to do is make sure that we get those artists practicing vernacular and craft more to the table. I think we have had more craft than vernacular uh, in the past. So we're again, this is about access and making sure that we are celebrating all the artists in our region. Great, thank you. And um, is it a conflict to, if you are starting an MFA program in fall of 2024, if you are not currently a student when applying, but may start school um, in the fall of 2024? Give me, uh, let's, let's schedule a technical assistance to discuss that. Because we, those are sort of like slippery slope type questions. Um, but typically when you, are you starting, I guess, yeah, I have further questions to ask about that. Are you starting in a visual arts program uh, or is it some other uh, subject matter? Um, Great. So so for specific questions like that, it would be best to reach out yeah, let's, let's do uh, to your eye. Yes, yes. Awesome. And then to clarify the work for the exhibitions, will they be brand new pieces of work or samples provided on the application? Uh, the samples, the work samples uh, included with the application are reference point. They may be selected for the exhibition or the curator may decide to examine your other bodies of work and include some of those works as well. So it all depends. Okay. And then um, we're having a couple more questions on the on the deadline. So can we, can we clarify what we mean by the last two years? If the deadline is 2024, are you saying um, yeah, 21 to 23? Yeah, January 2022. That's why I did it for the two-year period. So January. Great. So January 2022 to January 2024 is the two-year yes. period. Yes. Yes. Great. Um, and then for abstract art, would you, um, can you, can you kind of explain the categories for, if it were an abstract piece of work, what might it fit under? Um, <laughs> or would that be another one of those that you, you may need more information to clarify? And no, to I mean, give I that? think you have to, I mean, is it drawing? Is it, you know, it, it depends on what it is. What are you categorizing it as? I mean, I think within the categories, I think it'll be self-evident what it falls under. If it's representing various medium, then it's probably gonna be multidisciplinary. But if you have any questions, just-, just Reach out. Know. Yeah, reach out. <laughs> awesome. And then um, what would the, the procedure be if an artist ends up moving outside of the region post submission? So if you move outside of the region post submission, you're no longer eligible to really receive the, the fellowship or if the Southern Prize winner, finalist, any of that, if you move outside of the region. And then can you, um... Can you explain the definition of vernacular art? So vernacular art would be uh, what's commonly referred to as folk art. It's typically self-taught art, or art, self-taught art, artists, the work that they are producing. So they haven't gone through an, an, an academic program and they've pretty much uh, learned, the, the learned art on their own, uh, through their own uh, through methods outside of academia. Great. And then um, can you touch base again about the types of, of art um, that can be submitted? So all the different categories that uh, can be submitted. So if you go to our website and look at the guidelines, I don't have it right here, but I mean, it pretty much outlines everything that we um, that we accept. So, um, hold on a second. 
I'm going to travel to the website really quickly. And Emmett, while you're doing that, I'll say, I believe that is, I've gone through all of our questions and, and condensed some of them. So if you have any more questions, feel free to, to put them in the Q&A. Sure. So crafts, um, drawing, experimental, painting, photography, sculpture, mixed media, and multidisciplinary. So we have um, more definitive descriptions of that. Uh, on the website. So craft, craft artists have uh, work made substantially by hand where the skill and the technique for manipulating the material is primary to the artistic process. Materials may include clay, fiber, glass, leather, metal, paper, plastic, wood. So we do have a, a more extensive uh, description of the different types of categories. Uh, experimental work explores new non-traditional ideas and our technology. Um, and we go further into what experimental is for our purposes. Again, more extensive descriptions are on the website. Look under visual arts categories and the guidelines. And if you awesome. still have questions about that, definitely uh, shoot me an email or schedule technical assistance. Great. And then, um... Can you touch base one more time on how the grants and prizes work? Sure. So if you are uh, selected as the representative for your particular state, you receive a $5,000 cash award. There is unrestricted funds, so you can use that uh, however you want. We ask that you use it to further your artistic practice, but I mean, again, it's up to you how you use that. Uh, the nine state fellows uh, selected will compete for the Southern Prize winner and the Southern Prize finalist. Uh, again, a separate jury, a national jury will make that selection. And uh, we will know who those two individuals are when we have our uh, opening reception and award ceremony in uh, Hollywood, Florida in October. So uh, again, the winner receives an additional $25,000. So the total pool for the Southern Prize winner is 30,000. The Southern Prize finalists will receive an additional $10,000. So their total um, uh, uh, award is $15,000. I hope I, I hope that uh, I hope that helped and that clarified anything. If I if you need further information on any other of uh, the items we discussed, definitely follow up with us. Great, yeah. So just to clarify on the awards, it's there will be one selected from each of the nine states, and then right. out of those nine selected, one will be the finalist and one will be um, the runner up. The finalist and the winner, or the finalist and the and the winner. Yes. Yes. So one from each of the nine states we represent, and then out of those nine, um, two more will be selected. No, from those or nine, one two, from those nine, yeah. Two, uh, two will be selected: uh, the Southern Prize winner and Southern Prize finalists. So, for instance, this year uh, the winner is Victoria Duggar. She was also the state fellow for Georgia. So she's a state fellow for Georgia, but also the Southern Prize winner. Great. Um, and I think the rest of the questions on here are about specific pieces. So again, if you guys have any questions about your specific piece or need some clarification, uh, reach out to Emmett or I or uh, get technical support and we can help with that. Right. So as long as, and I'll say this, uh, when talking about uh, talking about scale and what would be something that we could move. So if you have a whole structure that's like the size of a small shed, we probably wouldn't be able to move that easily, reasonably around the, the region so that we have a shipper who can, who would first have to dismantle that and also have to pack it and then 
send it to the next site. It has to be real simple. So as long as it's not on that scale, I think, um, you know, we can talk. Um, but definitely, if you have questions, if your scale is, if you have installations that are kind of large size, let me know. And definitely give shoot an email or just like set up a time to talk with me. And I can provide further detail and clarification. Great. Are there um, any other questions uh, regarding bigger picture or um, did I miss anything? Was that for me? Um, for the great, for everybody. Okay. Um, <laughs> well, let me say this. Thank you so much uh, for joining us. I look forward to receiving your submissions. If you have questions, the sooner you ask, the better. So definitely shoot me an email, schedule time to talk with me if you so choose. Uh, we'll definitely follow up as promptly as possible so that you can make the deadline. You have a bit of time this year to get everything submitted. January 8th is the absolute deadline. That's Monday, January 8th. Um, so you have time to work through the holidays, Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year's Day, New Year's Eve, all of that uh, slightly past New Year's Day, New Year's Eve, but definitely enough time from now to submit the works or to submit your, your, your application. So uh, again, the sooner you let us know if you have any questions, the better. The fee waiver deadline, if you need a fee waiver, we know it's kind of, you know, it's um, financial difficulties going around because of, you know, the inflationary pressures and so on and so forth. Uh, give us a, give us um, not a call, but you have until Tuesday, January 2nd, to submit, that is an email to myself, just outlining, briefly outlining your circumstances, and I'll communicate with you directly on that. I sure can. <laughs> Here's our contact information, estevenson at southarts.org. My telephone number is there. Joseph inf Joseph's information is there. We'll have this available on the website, the presentation. So you'll have access to this as well if you need to go back through it. And we'll look to get this up uh, on the website within the next couple of days, probably by Tuesday. Give us Tuesday, Wednesday of next week. Any other questions? Again, I want to talk about the vernacular art and the craft art initiative that we have. I will be producing a uh, informational uh, video that will be posted on the website uh, in the next two weeks. So more information on that. If you have questions in the meantime, just send me an email or schedule time to talk. The technical assistance uh, link that is here is also in the guidelines at the very bottom of the guidelines. And I, I believe it's labeled as technical assistance or other or resources. So. Any other questions? All right, so thank you so much for joining us. Again, this information will be available, hopefully, we're, we're, we're targeting Wednesday of next week to have it available to you. Um, on our website. It will be on the Southern Prize and State Fellowships Visual Arts 
uh, page. Um, look forward to the special initiative informational video that will be posted on the website within the next two weeks. If you have questions in the meantime, before those dates, please touch base with us. Our information is here. Joseph, any other questions coming through? See, we have no more questions coming through. So okay. um, I believe that's it. We still have two minutes uh, in our hour. Um, if anyone has anything else, a lot of thank yous, which is great. But I think, uh, I think we've answered all we can. Sure. Okay. All righty. So you all take care. And thanks again so much for joining us. We look forward to receiving your applications.